Hello! So in this video, we're going to go through finding the greatest common denominator of two numbers. Let's go ahead and call those number, number A and number B. So I'll put number A here. I'll just put some random numbers in to get started with. So let's say 4 and 12. Now Excel actually has a little built-in function that can do this for us. So just to check our little code here. I'm going to go ahead and use Excel's function and then we can be sure that we got the right number. So GCD and I'm just going to put in the first number here and the next number and there you go. The base common denominator between 4 and 12 is 4. What I want to go through here is how to find this number using an if statement. So that might be actually the little built-in program that Excel has going on here for for its function. To do that, I'm going to bring over Euclid's algorithm. So an algorithm is kind of a flowchart that walks you through the logic of a code. And this is a really good way to, to think through the steps of how to get from A to B. And this is a really kind of a famous example of an algorithm. So to find the greatest common denominator of two numbers, so let's say you have two numbers, A and B, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and first we're going to ask the question, is B equal to zero? So after it goes through a whole bunch of loops, it's going to turn this into one of these numbers will go to zero. And if that is yes, then the answer is going to be whatever is over here in the A column. If B is not zero, then we're going to come in here and get into this loop. So the question we're going to ask is, is A larger than B? And if A is larger than B, if that answer is yes, we're going to reassign A a new value. So A's new value is going to be A minus B. And then it's going to come back up here and it's going to go through this thing again. So let's go ahead and, and do this first part where we're going to reassign A if A is larger than B, or we're going to leave A the same if it's not. So I'll go ahead and maybe highlight this little piece of it. So we're going to say if A is larger than B, if the answer to that is yes, then I'm going to reassign. So kind of follow this little arrow around here. I'm going to reassign A as A minus B. Otherwise, I'm going to leave A the same. So let's go ahead and make an if statement over here that will do that. So equals if A is larger than B. And look at, um, look at the notes that Excel gives us here. So for Excel, the if statement, the first little thing that we're going to do is a logical test. So we're saying if A is larger than B. And if the test is true, then we will do this first thing. So if that test is true, then we're going to reassign whatever is in this column the difference of A minus B. So that's this little piece right here. A is equal to A minus B. And then if it's false, we are going to just leave the value of A as is. Okay, and then as I pull this little if statement down, each row as I, as I come down, that would be kind of like going around the loop one time. So Excel is a really good way to, to visualize loops and see how, how logic is progressing to, to things. Okay, so that is one scenario. Now let's look at another scenario. So I'm going to change colors here and we'll think through the next piece of it. Okay, so no. So this means and notice for this one, we have A is larger than B. And here we're going to have less than or equal to. So if A is less than or equal to, to then I'm going to actually reassign what B is. So here is B, B is minus A, and that's what's going to happen if we're, we're less than or equal to. So let's go ahead and put that if statement in which will be reassigning what value B is holding. Okay, so here we go. Equals if, and this is 
A is less than or equal to. So we can put a couple of different um, operators there. And in this case, that's true, right? 4 is less than 12. And if that happens, then our new value in B, so everything in this column is going to be associated with B, our new value for B in that case is going to be B, the larger number, minus A, the smaller number. Otherwise, we're going to just leave B, leave it B. Okay, so there we go. That, that is what's happening in green here. So I'll go ahead and say enter. And you can see that, that this guy is working. So A has stayed the same. And now B is changing. So it gives us the difference between the two. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull these equations down. So each time it, it pulls information from the two cells above it. OK. And the last little bit of this loop here would say, is B equal to zero? And if B is equal to zero, yes, then ta -da, we have our greatest common denominator. And depending on what, what numbers you put in here, so if I have like 3 and 12 instead, it might take a few more iterations before I get to that zero. I think the larger the difference between these two, so if I have like 5 and I don't know, 150 or something. So in this case, it might take quite a few iterations before I finally get down to that zero, right? So think about what kind of a loop would be best for this scenario. So there's not a specific number of times that it has to go through that you're guaranteed to get a result. You want to be real careful. So this is where um, if you get things in there wrong, you might get into an infinite loop. But think this through. Try it out in Excel first just to help your logic really study this algorithm. And then see if you can make this in C++. And hopefully this will be a good introduction to algorithms as well, because in the future I want you guys to start making your own algorithms.